it hopefully will be a, a quick virtual meeting here. Um, so the meeting is being called to order and we have a facilities and maintenance update. With that, I will turn it over to you, Michael, and you can introduce Sally, please. Yeah, thank you, John. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, as you know, we started off the school year in the hybrid model. Uh, we had done a tremendous amount of planning. Uh, we are looking at a broader reopening uh, next month. Uh, and in the process, obviously wanted to assess where we are with our facilities. Uh, in addition to that, I know on Monday evening, Sally went before town council uh, for approval for a project to be taking place this fall in advance of the winter weather. So we're going to be a good opportunity um, just to get together and give you guys an update as to where we are with our facilities with HVAC, as well as ventilation, uh, cleaning, and supplies. So at this point in time, I'd like to turn it over to our Director of Physical Services, Sally Katz. Okay. Um, just to give you a brief overview, back in late summer, um, we toured the schools with Charles Brown from the Connecticut Department of Public Health, along with each principal in the school, uh, Mr. Emmett, myself, Paul Schoening, to figure out the best way to provide maximum ventilation in the schools. And we then went out and hired an engineering firm to do two things. Number one was to give us the um, way to get the most ventilation during the winter month, excuse me, during the, that late summer, August, September months, but also on a parallel path to give us a plan for how we can keep that ventilation during the winter months because the primary way that we were doing it in the summer was by keeping the dampers open um, on the unit air conditioning systems in the rooms along with the main dampers in a lot of the bigger units that supplied like gyms and, and cafeterias. Um, during the summer that was fine um, however, for the winter months, the engineers came back and gave us short-term and long-term solutions. The short-term solution for us is to, in five of the schools um, that are, do not already have a glycol, glycol is basically antifreeze, uh, that, do, that do not currently have glycol in their systems to make them into a 30% glycol system so that that way we can keep the dampers and keep the airflow that we have going now in the buildings, but we won't freeze out all the pipes um, mm -hmm. as we approach the winter, which is what we would have done if we just kept the dampers open and the temperatures went down to below 30, you know, basically could be 55 degrees at times. And we don't want to freeze any pipes. We don't want to do further damage to the building. And the only way in a short-term solution is to do this glycol addition to, all, to the systems. Um, the council with some cajoling did finally and grudgingly approve it. We do know that because we are going to be keeping the dampers open and then heating the air that is coming in to the building, that our energy costs are going to go up because <laughs> we're going to have to run the heating systems more optimally because we're not gonna close the dampers therefore creating you know, a, a thermal envelope in the building. We're gonna be basically opening them up and keeping them open, constantly bringing in cold air. But again, we're gonna satisfy the ventilation part. And right now the ventilation and trying to not, um, have COVID in our buildings is number one. There are already buildings. Um, so that was the first part. The second part is there were questions about the filters and changing filters in the equipment. In the elementary schools and the older schools, there's filters go by what they call a MERV rating. In the older schools, the MERV rating that we use is an eight. In some place like the high school, the MERV rating is a 13. That is at high efficiency. You hear them HEPA filters. And we can do that at the high school because the equipment is new and the amount of air being forced through that MERV rated HEPA filter 
is much greater than what we can you do in the older buildings. If we tried to put a MERV 13 filter in Hammer, we would blow out every pump and fan that we have because they just can't push the air through the tight knit MERV 13 filter. And so what we have done in the elementary schools is that we are now using the lower rated filter, but doing the filter changes twice as often. So we're doing them almost, uh, normally we would do it twice a year. Now we're doing it more like four to six times a year in order to make sure that we're cleansing anything that we get into, into the building and trying to keep it moving as much as possible. And as Charles Brown said to us today, you know, people talk about how quickly do you turn over air in a building? You know, it's not like you close the building and all the air gets sucked out and then you bring all the new air in. It's a continual process. And as long as that process of bringing in air and pulling air out happens, we should be in good shape. That is the short-term solution. In the long-term solution um, that the engineers, and, and once the engineers give us the final report, I certainly will give that to Mr. Emmett to share with all of you. Right now, we only have a draft report. Um, their long-term solution, you know, basically said you need to overhaul and replace all of the HVAC systems in your buildings. And as I said to Gary and to the, uh, to the town council, you're talking multiple millions of dollars. And once you start having to, it's kind of like if you have a car and you have to replace the engine, you sit there and you go, should I just replace the car? And that's kind of the same thing with the school uh, and advocating for, you know, obviously the plan that you guys had been working on up until now, when you're going to be pulling out duct work and machinery and asbestos things and all of you know the grates and the grills and you're hitting every room when you start doing that on that larger scale essentially you're building yourself a new building uh, but that was the long-term solution by the engineers that the buildings are just too old um, to really be able to effectively and easily and efficiently do those types of upgrades. Um, so kind of that's the, the big view about ventilation. Um, cleaning wise, we have, you know, as far as cleaning supplies in the schools, we have made sure that every room has bottles of uh, disinfectant, paper towels, there are hand wash, there's soap at the hand washing stations. We even um, created our own exterior hand washing stations for when kids had gone outside, they could wash their hands before they came back inside. Um, so we, uh, we feel pretty confident that we have at least outfitted people and given people the opportunity to have the cleaning products that they need in, in the classrooms. Our staff has been diligently cleaning the buildings and certainly on the Wednesdays when we've had no students in there, we've been going in and making sure again with HEPA filters, we're vacuuming, we're washing and disinfecting floors, we're scrubbing, um, you know, touch points multiple times a day, we're doing bathrooms multiple times a day. Um, even when the kids are there, there's schedules of when we're doing the bathrooms. So we are, you know, we are consistently staying at that, you know, kind of DEF CON 5 level of cleaning um, because we feel it's, it's the best way to go. Um, and I want to also say thank you to Mr. Evan and Matt Kazaka because Matt shared some of his CARES money with us and we're getting um, a, a scrubber for the, you know, the high school cafeteria and another one of the Clorox kind of the, if you've seen them, how they clean airplanes with those guns. We have one, we're gonna be getting a second one um, so that if we do need to do a rapid, res a rapid response, we can go in and immediately completely 
disinfect a room within a half an hour. If we are told that uh, anyone who tested positive or whatever was in a place, we can section off that room, outfit the person, have them go in there, completely disinfect a room in a short period of time. So that's kind of the COVID update. Um, again, one of the things I think that it was a positive from this was that as we did tour the buildings, we found that there were some major pieces of equipment that for years hadn't been working. You know, in, in Charles Wright, there was a, you know, a, a, an air handler and some other uh, equipment that we have since fixed. Um, and is all working. And so that's also a, a good thing. The project we have going on at Highcrest to uh, make sure that the boiler room meets all code is, is uh, more than halfway done right now. And it's been able to be done without any type of um, intrusion to the faculty or the students, which is great. Um, you know, our only, our, our biggest um, hurdle moving forward right now is as we start preparing for more people in the building at any given time, it's moving furniture around and trying to get the distancing. Um, and then where do we put that furniture? Um, we're, we're starting to we're starting to maximize our storage space and our spaces to where we can put furniture that we've had to remove from rooms because of distancing. Um, but those are the, the challenges that are, you know, these are the, these are the, um, the granular issues that come down from COVID that as we are, as we have to live with it are the, the ramifications of the pandemic. So. Sally, thank you so much. Um, Mike, do you, want, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I just want to let uh, the committee know that on uh, Monday, um, you know, obviously we're planning uh, for a larger reopening down the road. I thought it prudent to have Charles Brown come in. You know, he saw the summertime, what we needed. So I had him come in on Monday uh, with me and he and I walked all seven buildings. So he could look at our current mitigation strategies along with um, HVAC and cleaning. Uh, he was pleased with what he saw with regard to ventilation. Um, you know, he touted uh, Emerson Williams gym as the most airflow he thinks he's ever felt coming in an interior space. Um, so he felt good about that. Um, on Wednesdays when we have the full remote day, that's my day to get out to buildings. Um, so I got to five out of seven schools yesterday going into classrooms to make sure that we have hand sanitizer, making sure that we have uh, uh, the disinfectant, making sure that soap is, is available and making sure that staff is utilizing that time to, to clean. So uh, I've been at it for four weeks um, doing that. And each time I go to buildings, I am seeing uh, the work getting done. Um, the other piece, John, I think you need to take a look at here is, you know, tomorrow will mark the six week mark already of this school year um, and up to this point in time knock on wood we have had no infection related to schools uh, we've had a total of one positive case um, which was traced to outside um, so we have not seen infection in in the district at this point in time we hope that that continues um, so i think it speaks at this point in time to you know mitigation strategies and a physical environment that uh, is, is meeting the needs Thank you, Michael. You're do, do committee members have any uh, thoughts or suggestions they'd like to ask Sally or Mike? John, I have something I want to ask Sally about. Have any of the teachers said anything about air quality or air coldness or air heat? Um, just, just the life at Charles Wright was like a life either in the Antarctic or you were in the Amazon, you okay. know. One or the in, other. In, in, um, in September, you know, early September and, and things, it was, we were able to do pretty well. It wasn't too hot. Um, you know, the air conditioning systems kept up with things. There were later in September when we had those brief 
times when at night it dipped down into 40, as Mr. Emmett says, that was his great indication that the ventilation was working because when he would walk in the building in the morning, it was cold. <laughs> Um, but that's also why we are going and dealing with this glycol issue now in, in, you know, October and trying to get it because we are, you know, the heat is going on. And so, um, you know, it hasn't been, but actually I haven't really heard from teachers thinking it's too hot, too cold. You know, I think that with less people in the building every day, um, you know, when it was warmer, we were the air conditioning was able to keep up because there just was, wasn't as much body heat in the buildings. Um, and hopefully we're just trying to get ahead of when it really dips and gets too cold. Right now, what's happening is that the buildings during the day are, are keeping a pretty decent temperature. Um, I do know tonight it's supposed to get cold. And so it's probably gonna be a little chilly tomorrow morning when people walk in, but they are expecting a high of 68 tomorrow with, with a lot of abundant sunshine from the time that the sun comes up and it's supposed to be in the seventies over the weekend. So, um, you know, hopefully our, our good luck will, will hold out on that. Okay, one last question. Does anybody have evidence that it's better to be cold for COVID virus or to be warm? I mean, where does this thing live in its optimum environment? Anywhere. Anywhere. Where yeah. Matter? Anywhere. Okay. Yeah. Anywhere. yeah. We saw that during the summer, you know, um, that even though people were, were outside and it was a very hot summer, this thing still stuck around, even in areas of the world where it's gotten colder this thing is still around. It doesn't seem to be as temperature sensitive as other viruses um, that we've been told. Okay, thank you, Sally. Thank you for all your work, Michael. Keep those babies safe. I just it's it's, it's really, and, and I see Elaine there, but I have to say the diligence of the staff and the pride that the staff, the custodial staff has taken and put in their buildings is really extraordinary. I mean, these are people who have come to work every day, put their masks on, do everything that they can for the kids. They really do love those kids. They really do. And, um, you know, I, I, will, I will certainly, you know, and I try, to, uh, I try to thank them as much as I can, but um, I appreciate your words and and really it's it's because of them if i may i just want to uh, compliment go on to that one as well sally um i wanted to ask how everyone ho was holding up uh with the uh the new normal i guess that's what we want to talk about and i think if we look down the road um the fact that you're a part of our team right now may have proved positive for the board of ed uh, only because the town has now come into the board's handle and sees it from a different set of eyes. And those eyes are between you and Michael. So before it was just the Board of Ed, and now it's the town. And I think that's what, you know, if any good has come out of this, I think the fact that you're in the buildings, you see what's going on, the custodian you know i just think it if anything this is good as well like you said uh covid allowed you to see things that weren't properly working mm -hmm. and that you can go to the town council through the town manager and pretty much say what we're saying but from a different set of eyes so i thank you for that and uh, being a part of our team as well it's not easy for any of us um but I just thank you and your staff, make sure they know, and Michael knows how much we're appreciative of him and his staff as well. But I just want everyone to know that, um, you know, this is gonna be around for a while mm -hmm. and no one knows what the future is gonna be, but I think we're holding up and uh, hopefully we're ready. I think it, it looks like we're pretty positive. And, um, so I, I'm really happy to hear that. So thank you, Sally.
Elaine, I, I've seen. Yeah, I have a, a Michael and me, you maybe can clarify. <laughs> now that more kids are coming back, I mean, Michael, are you surveying people that are, we're either going full time four days a week with Wednesdays cleaning if we, when we reopen, correct? Four days mm -hmm. in. Yeah, let me, I'll, let me explain that right up front, Elaine. We, we are looking at a transitional reopening. Correct. Meaning not everybody at once. Right, I know. It where but, over the course of the month of November, we'll right. be adding additional students. I read that. But yeah. my, my question is, Michael, let's just say we bring the first grade back, okay? Mm -hmm. And that the first of November, I, I'm making this up. But how are we doing with, uh, can we do this with less social distance than we have now? Can we put them three feet apart? Is that an okay thing with uh, Charles? Yes. Or are they, Cause now they're pretty far apart when I see you send me those pictures. Correct. Are all of us on Friday updates, not just Correct. me. But are we able to, when they come back, if more come back, the spacing's got to be reduced. Is that an okay thing with the health department? I'm just yes. quite curious, because, you know, that's a, that was a stipulation we had that high crest classrooms were configured so badly that we had, couldn't put them. They were, I don't think when we viewed them, they were much more than four feet then. But yes. is there anything that we allowed to do there? Yeah, what, what uh, both the Central Connecticut Health District as well as the Connecticut Department of Health um, speak to is a suite of mitigation strategies. So what we're looking at is we're looking at social distancing, we're looking at frequent hand washing, we're looking at wearing masks, we're, we're looking at uh, remaining home if ill, both for students and staff. So it's, it's a variety of uh, yes. various yeah. strategies. So okay. clearly with the physical space of our buildings in yes. some buildings, we're not going to be able to maintain that six feet. Okay. However, one of the things that we have seen and our evidence has shown us that we were concerned about early on is mass compliance. Mass compliance has been exceptional, absolutely Good. exceptional among staff and students. So that, well, certainly, that helps. Uh, the record shows we're doing a great job. Just as you said, there's been no cases in school that started in school. But I just wondered as we bring more kids back, if that's an okay thing with the health department, I don't want, you know, it kids will, to come in. It, You'll it be reconfiguring each room again. Right. It, it okay. will increase risk. The more kids you yes. bring in, right. the, the more, and again, we have risk now having right. half of our kids in. Uh, okay. the, the challenge, obviously, is going to be continuing to maximize the other mitigation strategies that we have in place okay. to address the reduction in the social distancing. Um, again, the mask wearing, I can't say enough of how important that is. I will say also, you know, in getting data and information, I meet uh, on a weekly basis with my Hartford area colleagues. I I've talked to multiple superintendents that um, have gone either all in full reopening or are phasing in now. Um, and, you know, I asked the question of the group, has everybody been able to maintain the six foot social distance? And the answer was no. It's just- No, I can't, I can't see it either. But yeah, if, as long as it's okay by time. you, that's all mm -hmm. that matters. Well, it's okay. a consultation. That's a key piece for me. It's, <laughs> it's getting the data from the, from the experts. Right, thank you. Are, my, I forgot to ask, how are the two classrooms at Highcrest? The portables? Portals, but the portables have been fantastic. I mean, it, it was. What's in there, Mike? Space. Yep. Hey. Yeah. What's in there? Space. So. What kind of space? I'm sorry. Teacher, uh, teacher workspace and tutor space. Okay. Okay. For those two classrooms. Thank you. Any other questions of the committee? Michael, you all set. Sally, you are all set. Yeah, I just wanted to add uh, to uh, Bobby's question with regard to temperature. Um, and Sally, I want to confirm that all of our boilers are functional and, and operating. So we were able to turn them on uh, when they were needed. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. And we, um, right now, um, as Paul is working with the company that we're doing the glycol with, we're doing partial drain downs of the system so that when they get the to come in to do the glycol, it will be all prepped for them. On the days that they are working at certain schools, we will have to shut the heat off. Um, but we're, we're gonna do that with the forecast in mind. Mm -hmm. I have just one. So um, hopefully we won't have a, a, a bad winter. 
and you know we'll be able to continue in this fashion with the beautiful sunshine and 60 degree weather right through the whole time okay um any other questions concerns the uh you know we're we're moving forward and uh I appreciate the update. I, w I will, and I hope I'm not speaking out of turn, but also I think that if any of you see town council members, um, you know, the more information, I mean, I give them information, um, you know, and again, um, we're pushing that these steps that we're taking are for the health of the students and anyone who is in that goes into those buildings like you know we were asked some questions on monday night you know why don't we just close the dampers at night and it would save energy and then open them in the morning we were like no the the recommendations for the state is to get and to keep as much ventilation as we can going and right. so um gary gary evans and myself have been out there, you know, holding up and, and really trying to be advocates for the school. So if in your travels, you see town council members, um, I think it would also be good to hear from, from all of you as to what you see when you're in the schools. Um, you know, going back to John, what you were saying, this is now the town. Yeah, the dynamics have really changed. This is yeah. very interesting. Yeah. Uh, I do have one thing to say, John, and I don't know if you were on when I said it earlier, that in the news, the General Assembly is having a special assembly and part of it is to um, provide and divvy out the construction money for schools. So obviously that hasn't been buried. They're still working that. Um, and they obviously they're gonna have money in that rainy day fund to use. So future ideas may not be off the table. That's good news. Yeah. So hopefully we'll be able to uh, pull a meeting together, you know, after the first of the year or something, just to pull us together and unwind. Mm -hmm. Keep it together. Okay. Anyone else? No. We're Get good. The flu, shots. The, flu shot, the flu clinics, the flu shot clinics in, in Weathersfield are next week. Their drive-through at the uh, community center, <laughs> and it's very important. Would we just put your arm out? Yeah, literally. <laughs> That's for me, John, because I'm chicken. <laughs> they said it went extremely well when they did it in Berlin the other day. They had almost what did he say, Mike? Like three times the amount of people they normally get. Sure, um, convenient. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Perfect. You're just going to be able to drive in. Go yeah. in a store, put that mask on, all that stuff again. I hate it. <laughs> so I just hate going in with those masks on. My glasses steam up. I can't see a price on anything. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> just a way to stay safe. Elaine, just okay. put it in your pocketbook and walk out. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll say, now I can see it because I took the mask off. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, right. one of the things I heard that I was very happy about is businesses are bringing in people to give employees flu shots. So I like that whole idea. d and is doing that, Bobby. d and oh. Market. Yeah. And for the public, if you go shopping for something, you can get in line for a flu shot at D&D. Yeah, but they made the employees all get yeah. the flu through them, which I think mm -hmm. is just a, a brilliant More business. convenient, yep. Yeah. Yeah. And why have your employees sick? So it'll be good. Michael, is there any reason why our teachers aren't getting flu shots or they can? Uh, it, the Stillman newsletter that was provided to you on Friday, I actually provided the flyer, the link to the flyer, and strongly encouraged all staff members to get the flu shot. While the flu shot does not um, prevent COVID-19, um, obviously, it's been uh, deemed to be effective in combating the flu, and the last thing we would want to see is, um, you know, having the flu and COVID, or having the flu and thinking you have COVID. So, again, it's another one of those mitigation strategies that we hope to be able to use to keep our um, families uh, safe and healthy. My, I just have one other question, be Michael, and going forward uh, with a larger population in the schools, 
Uh, I know that we have um, removed some of our classrooms without windows. We've you know, removed the students for that purpose. Will they have to go back into those rooms? Yeah, that John, I, I don't have an answer to you at this point. I have a meeting tomorrow with the um, secondary administration in the morning uh, to talk about their plan. And then I've got a meeting with elementary folks in the afternoon. So um, we're going to try and limit that as, as best we can. Um, but I'm not 100% sure. So I can okay. get on that after I meet. Can you, can you send us that update in Friday's notes then? What, what you came out of that? Yep. Thank you. Yep. That would be helpful. Well, I'm sure we'll have questions after we hang up, but if not, uh, motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Everyone? All right, listen, it was good to see everyone via Zoom. Hopefully, we'll be able to see each other in person. Take care. Be safe. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.